Davosity itself has been a well-documented subject. Still, one of the reasons Davo has become well-known is because of the transformation over the last several years. However, this transformation has not reached all areas of Davo. Therefore, the safety inside and outside of the city is a questionable subject. At this current moment, some governments warn against travelling to particular parts of the Philippines. This is often due to terrorism and clashes between insurgent groups. For example, the UK government alerts the public to only travel unless it's essential, but in addition, they advise against all travel to the south and west of Davao Island. The US Department of State has documented nine explosions and bombings over the last few years and many of these were located in Mindanao. To summarise, the most significant factors to be made aware of if you plan to live outside of Davao City is the current safety concerns. However, millions of expats visit and live in the Philippines and most of these stays are trouble free. In general, the cost of living in Davao is fantastic. If you are looking to save money living in the Philippines, you will find many opportunities outside of Davao City. From my experience and cost of living, I've found prices outside of Davao City to be around 15-20% to cheaper than inside the city. Therefore, as a rough guideline, if you estimate your monthly expenses to be around about $1,000 when living inside Davao City, your living expenses outside of Davao City will be around 800 US dollars a month. In the smaller provinces and towns, travellers will unlikely find any corporate businesses. Most often the businesses are local and family operated. Nonetheless, there are many brands and well-known businesses in the larger cities across Davao Island. One piece of advice I would give for those living outside of Davao, whether they are a local Filipino or a foreigner, is to avoid travelling solo unless you are confident that you will be safe at all times. It has to be mentioned that over the years there have been several reports of kidnappings across Davao, and these are both of locals and of foreigners. Thus, as there is safety in numbers, it's recommended to avoid any solo travel in certain areas. As an expat living in Davao, it's best to decide on what attractions, features and living experiences are essential to you. This will help you decide on where to live in Davao. While travelling or living outside of Davao City, it is likely that you will be looked at from time to time. I've had times where people have come to touch my skin and just come to say hi and to talk. Most often, this is in the less well-known areas of Davao. Locals do not do this out of disrespect, but instead more out of curiosity. In some cases, especially with the younger generation, you may find that you are the first white or black man that they have ever seen. So it's best just to go with it, be friendly and say hi back. 
The standard practice applies when living outside of Davao, similar to the rest of the Philippines. These practices include don't boast about wealth, avoid addressing elderly by their first name, do not disrespect local customs or Filipinos, avoid staring or other aggressive body language, and so on. So last week, Clyde dropped us a comment asking, can you give some details on Northern Leyte? This area is a beautiful part of the Philippines, but it's much less touristy and well known than other areas. So today we will be exploring what and where is Leyte? Where is the best place to live in Leyte? What is the cost of living? And finally addressing if Leyte is a good place to live for foreigners or not. So the first question is what and where is Leyte? Leyte is an island in the Visayas group which is a region of the Philippines. The area is located east of Cebu City and when looking at Leyte politically the island is split into two provinces north and south. The area of Leyte is most remembered to westerners due to the historical conflict during World World War II. However, despite this remembrance, the region of Leyte is not as touristy as other areas of the Philippines. The next question is where to live in Leyte. If you wish to live in Leyte but prefer a city, then a fantastic option is Tacloban in the north. But if you enjoy the beach life and the islands, then southern Leyte is the best. One thing to remember if you're planning to live in Leyte as a foreigner is that the accommodation and living expenses are different from Cebu and Manila due to the area of Leyte being much less touristic. Next we move on to the cost of living in Leyte. The cost of living as a single expat is estimated between $750 to $950. This figure includes the standard of living but does not include any high-end luxuries. The financial data for Leyte is unfortunately limited. Nonetheless, based on feedback from the online community on average, Leyte is approximately 15-19% to 19 cheaper than Cebu. The accommodation rental price in Leyte is between 6,000 pesos to 15,000 pesos for a standard house. The difference of cost will depend on the neighbourhood and the size. The best accommodation, which is accessible to shops, etc., is on the higher end of the scale, but it is possible to find cost-effective housing, but there is a considerable drop in quality. Regarding the transportation, one thing to mention when looking at the cost of living in Leyte is that the transportation is often more challenging than in other areas. Several expats have mentioned that it's difficult to rent a car or motorcycle in this area unless you are in one of the major cities of Leyte. So with all this being said, is this area a good place to live for foreigners? Leyte is a fantastic place to live, especially if you are an individual who enjoys the natural wonders of the Philippines. However, one restriction is that the region itself is sometimes not as accessible as other areas of the Philippines. Therefore, transportation to some areas may not be the easiest, but this accessibility issue can be helped with some guidance from the locals. Over the last several years, there has been a push by the tourist authorities to promote the region of Leyte, However, from the feedback of the online community, it appears that many foreigners visit Southern Leyte as a short vacation but do not live permanently in Leyte. Nevertheless, the cost of living is superb, the locals are incredibly friendly and welcoming, thus many travellers see Leyte as an excellent place to live. Today, we will discover the best islands to live in the Philippines and explore what island is best for you. We have a mixture of different islands today. Some are big and popular and others are more remote and less well known. But nonetheless, I've attached the link to the full article in the description for those who are looking for more information. The first option is El Nido. Located in the northern part of the mainland of Palawan is El Nido. In other words, it is not an island on its own 
alone, but instead a part of the larger Palawan Island. El Nido is approximately seven hours away from Puerto Princesa by bus. This is one of the best areas to live in the Philippines if you enjoy the area of Halong Bay in Vietnam. This is because both areas have many similarities. The archipelago islands are known for their mountains, limestones and jungles. El Nido became very well known due to its increasing numbers of European, American and Australian visitors. As a result, more amenities and nightlife have been established in the area. In addition, the local government have invested in preserving the environment. Next we have Bahol. This area is well known and many YouTubers have spoken about Bahol previously. So instead, we will summarize the main points. Bahol is the 10th largest island in the Philippines. If you plan to live on the island, there are many things to do, such as taking a ride on a scooter or going on a local nature hike. Bahol is known for its waterfalls, jungles and chocolate hills. City life can be found in the south part of the island. The next island is Sikihor. This quaint island is located near the southern coast of Bahol and Cebu. Individuals who do not enjoy the big crowds will enjoy Sikihor as many report that the island is very quiet right now. From Bahol it takes approximately one and a half hours to reach the island by ferry. Some of the highlights of the island include its beautiful corals, amazing waterfalls and immaculate beaches. This is one of the best areas to live in the Philippines if you wish to meet friendly locals. Cliff diving is one of the most legendary activities on the island. Moving on to Chagao, you will likely see a lot of palm trees on this laid back island. Aside from the beach and island hopping experience, Chagao is popular for surfing. There are many premium accommodations available, but for those who are looking to stay on a budget, you will be able to find a nice room for 15 or 20 dollars a night and even in some cases lower if you can speak to the locals directly or if you can book more long term. Up next is Barakay. Barakay is considered one of the most beautiful islands in the Philippines. When living on this island you will see the lush rainforest and clear blue waters. The island was closed for a brief period and has been in the news quite a few times over the last several years. As somebody who lives on the island you will see many bars and restaurants along the coastline. Nightlife is unforgettable and fantastic on the island, but prices can be slightly high. Alternatively, you may consider Malapasca. This island is great for scuba diving and snorkeling. Scuba divers often see manta rays, seahorses, blue ringed octopuses, fresher sharks, and there are even shipwrecks underneath. Malapasca Island is gradually becoming more and more developed. Therefore, you may experience local fiestas or events on the island during your stay. The next island is Bantayan. You may consider living on this island because of its uncrowded and enchanted white beaches. One of the benefits of the island is that there is a large selection of accommodation for both short and long term. If you plan to live in Cebu City and do not wish to live on an island, you may wish to visit Bantayan as a get away or short vacation. Exploring the island on a scooter is ideal. So which island in the Philippines is best for you? Each island in the Philippines has its own unique charm and there are plenty of pros and cons geographically and financially. For example, Barakay is a beautiful and fantastic option as it's highly developed. However, due to the tourism from locals and international travelers, the total living expenses will likely be on the high end of the scale compared to other islands. Nevertheless, one of the great things about living on an island in the Philippines is that most islands are situated close to other areas and are highly accessible by local ferries. Some smaller islands in the Philippines are less populated and can provide a very cheap standard of living, but this again goes back to your own individual lifestyle. For example, western food prices can be much higher if you live on a small island. On the other hand, there will likely be more competition and price differences if you live on a much larger touristy island.
Today, we will explore living in Iloilo City in the Philippines as a foreigner. We will cover the cost of living, the safety, nightlife, things to do, pros and cons, and finally summarizing what it is like living in Iloilo City. First is the cost of living. A one bedroom unit or apartment can range between $300 US to $500 a month. Many units can be found on platforms such as Airbnb. This is often recommended if you're staying short term. However, if you are planning to stay long term, most modern condominiums that have a good level of facilities such as a Vida are around $370, but there are also cheaper and more expensive options available inside and outside of the city. The utility prices are fairly standard in the city. Electricity prices were overly high, however, as of July 2021, the city's electricity price went down by 36%. The internet internet is okay. It's not the strongest, but it's okay. Transportation and entertainment costs are also fairly standard for the city. Thus, for a single adult, the expected cost of living is between 900 to 1050 US dollars a month. Next, we move on to the safety. Ilo Ilo City is a safe city for most foreigners in general. I've been reading through several reports on the city's safety and found that Ilo Ilo City is ranked as one of the leading safe zones for the Philippines. In 2019, an online survey was conducted and Ilo Ilo City ranked as the eighth safest city in Southeast Asia. Nonetheless, every city has had its bad periods and a city will always have an element of risk so it's always advised to be vigilant. Moving on to the nightlife and things to do. Festival Walk and Robinsons are two of the largest and most popular malls in the area. Several historical and natural sites around the city include the art museum and religious points of interest. There are also several bars, but they are currently closed at the moment. Nearby islands are accessible as well as other attractions outside of the city. So now let's take a look at some pros and cons of living in Ilo Ilo City. The first advantage is that the area is going through a build, build, build transformation. You will often see many construction workers and developments are being built in this area. For those who like to purchase pre-selling condominiums, now is a perfect time. Another benefit is that there are quite a lot of hospitals in this area and many of which offer different types of patient care. Moving on to the disadvantages and one disadvantage is that the traffic can be a problem during peak times, but this is to be expected. However, the good news is, is that traffic is not as bad as it is in Manila or Cebu. The last point to mention can be an advantage or disadvantage depending on your lifestyle. And this is that Ilo Ilo City has a more relaxed vibe similar to that of Davao City, making it a perfect destination for retirees. However, if you enjoy the parties or the craziness of Manila, for example, you may find that Iloilo is slightly too quiet and therefore this may be an advantage or disadvantage for you. So the final question is what is it like living in Iloilo City? As mentioned, the area is a great place to live in the Philippines. It is typically quieter than Cebu and Manila, so it does offer a slightly slower paced way of life. The city is also a growing area for foreigners, however it remains a less touristy area than other well-known cities in the Philippines. So it is likely that you will not see a great deal of expats walking around the city. Still, there are communities of expats who are based in this area. The people of Ilo Ilo City in the Philippines are incredibly welcoming and you will have no difficulty getting involved with the local community and building connections around the city. So today we will be looking at what is life like for foreigners who are living in Angeles City in the Philippines. We will explore what the city is known for, the atmosphere, the cost of living, safety and ultimately is Angeles City a good place to live. 
For a full rundown, I've added the complete article in the description if you are looking for more information. So one of the most popular questions is what is Angela's city known for? The city is most known for its entertainment and nightlife. This includes adult entertainment for gentlemen and casinos. Therefore, some expats have referred to Angela's city as the Pattaya of the Philippines. A BBC article characterised Angela City as being the centre spot for the sex industry in the Philippines. The main street for the red light district in Angela City is Fields Avenue. So what is the vibe of the city? As mentioned a moment ago, Angela City is known for its entertainment. Still, the city does offer more for expats which increases the experience and the quality of life. However, you may find that some parts of the city are still in development. The malls and business locations are modern and clean, but some areas can feel underdeveloped outside of these. This includes broken sidewalks, unfinished construction and abandoned garbage, but this is only in some neighbourhoods. Another big question asked is what is the cost of living in Angela City? As a guideline, a budget of $850 to $1,150 is recommended for a single adult. In addition, some entertainment costs in Angela City can be expensive. Thus, if you are looking to live comfortably in Angela City, it's recommended to budget at least $1,500 but this is not essential. The good news is, is there are several accommodation types to choose from. The price to rent a small studio, such as a condominium, ranges between 20 to 30,000 Filipino pesos. For a one bedroom condominium unit, prices range between 25 to 35 Filipino pesos. Location and facilities are big factors in determining the price. However, on the other side of the coin, there are many options for budget living in the city. The transportation costs are low, gyms are also fairly priced, however some are slightly more expensive. A typical gym price ranges between 1,500 to 2,500 Filipino pesos. Finally, utility prices in Angela City are fairly standard for the Philippines. Moving on to the safety. Unfortunately, the data and statistics is limited in terms of safety of Angela City. However, we do have testimonies and accounts that can be added up to give us a general picture. The most talked about safety concern from the expat community involved theft and scams. However, many expats live in the city full time and many of those speak about how safe and relaxed the city is, while some disagree. And finally, today's ultimate question, is Angela City a good place to live? The city can be a fantastic place to live depending on what kind of lifestyle you are ultimately looking for when living in the Philippines. With everything being said today, many retirees have traveled to many different parts of the Philippines and chose to retire long term in Angela City. Therefore, one would assume that the quality of life in Angela City is good as it is a popular hotspot for many expats. But fundamentally, when you're thinking about yourself, it really depends on what kind of lifestyle you are looking for when you travel to Angela City. So gentlemen, as time is always against us, let's dive straight into what is life like in Bacolod City in the Philippines. Question 1. What is Bacolod City known for? The city is best known for its friendly locals and its urbanised atmosphere. In fact, the city has a nickname, the City of Smiles, due to its friendliness of locals. In addition, Bacolod City is known in the food scene for its local cuisine. The next question is what is the vibe of the city. The general vibe of the city is fairly laid back, however, Bacolod has its fair share of malls and developments resulting in a more modern feel. Similar to most parts of the Philippines, there is a great deal of growth in this current era, so you may see construction and developments as you walk around the city. Suppose you are thinking about moving and living in Bacolod City. In that case, you will find that the locals are extremely positive and open towards foreign visitors. And this this positively impacts the overall atmosphere for foreigners who decide to visit and live in Bacolod City in the Philippines. Similar to Cebu, there are also several business process outsourcing centres across the city, so you may find that some locals you meet work for call cool centres for American, Australian or British companies. But one of the leading questions is what is the cost of living in Bacolod? 
The cost of living in Bacolod City in the Philippines is approximately $850 to $1,150 a month for a single adult. If you can live economically, then the total living expenses in Bacolod are around $700 a month, excluding your extra living costs. In most cases, lifestyle extras are between $100 to $450 each month, resulting in a total of $850 to $1,150 a month month on average. Living expenses in Bacolod City such as cell phone bills, internet bills, water bills, laundry and gym membership often remain low. Water and phone bills are often the lowest and sometimes these only come to a few hundred pesos a month. But as always, this is only based on an average and your living expenses may be slightly higher or lower depending on your usage. When looking at the cost of living for a condominium in Bacolod, you will find that most small studios range between 15 to 17,000 pesos. This is around 300 to 339 US dollars. On the other hand, larger one bedroom units are often priced between 20 to 25,000 pesos which is approximately 400 to 498 US dollars. However, a cheaper option to live in Bacolod City in the Philippines is to rent a small house. Prices for which range between 6 to 13,000 pesos, which is approximately 120 to 259 US dollars. Is Bacolod City safe? According to online contributions over the last three years, the crime index score results as moderate. However, it's important to add that most cities in the Philippines are typically rated as average in terms of crime index score. Officially, the Bacolod City Police Office reported a decrease of 19.1% in criminal cases from January to March 2021. Is living in Bacolod, Philippines a good idea? From our calculations and the latest population statistics, the population for Bacalod City is around 59% smaller than Cebu, which means that the lifestyle is slightly quieter, which is often an advantage for those who are looking to settle down or those who are retired. Many expats have visited and stayed long term in Bacalod City due to the high quality of life and this also includes the lower living expenses and the vibrant city experience. Welcome back gentlemen, today we will be looking at Cagayan de Oro in the Philippines. I will be referring to this city as CDO simply because the pronunciation will be different every time I say it. CDO is a well-known city located in northern Mindanao and is approximately 5 hours and 30 minutes away from Davao City by bus. Basaya is the prominent language spoken in CDO with Tagalog being the second followed by English. However, fear not. As similar to other modernized cities in the Philippines, there are many English speakers within the city. One common question is how to get from Davao City to Cagayan de Oro. There are several ways to travel from Davao City to CDO. The fastest and most convenient is to fly. Other options include private taxis, driving your own vehicle and the regular public buses. With the flights, it seems that there are not many direct flights in this current COVID-19 era. Private transportation is the next option to travel from Davao City to CDO and it's best to negotiate with local taxi drivers who will be happy to drive as long as the price is right. In addition, because drivers will need to drive back to the main city, whether that be CDO or Davao City, they may ask for extra money for gasoline for the return journey. Another common method is to drive your own vehicle. The prices to rent a car tend to be between 1,000 pesos and 2,000 pesos a day, but this depends on the make and the model. The last option is by bus. Bus times start at 3.10 a.m. and operate every 30 or 40 minutes or so and the bus stops around 1.30 p.m. The price of which is currently 480 pesos. So now let's take a look at the cost of living in Cagayan de Oro in the Philippines. To live comfortably in Cagayan de Oro, Philippines, a single adult will need between 1,200 to 1,500 US dollars a month. This is the 
equivalent of 60 to 75,000 pesos. However, those who have an expensive lifestyle may wish to budget around $2,000 a month, but at the same time, there are also budget-friendly living opportunities in CDO. If you have a basic lifestyle, you may find that the cost of living in CDO are very similar to that of Davao City. Condominium prices in CDO tend to be around 15 to 20,000 pesos for a studio and between 20 to 30,000 pesos for a large one bedroom unit. You may also find that there are several nice modern houses within the 12 to 15,000 peso mark and even some cheaper units if you can live outside of the main city. You can also find a place within the city as low as 5,000 pesos to 8,000 pesos, however there is a significant drop in quality. Another common question in Cagayan de Oro is the transportation. The great news is there are several forms of transportation, both public and private. The cheapest form of transportation in CDO is a Jepney and this usually starts around 7 pesos. Most foreigners living in the city tend to enjoy the experiences of public transportation such as Jepneys, therefore their overall cost for transportation in CDO remains low. If you are looking to go further afield, Cagayan de Oro has an airport and a ferry that is used to take trips to Cebu or other parts of the Philippines. Another hot topic is dating. Dating is an interesting topic, especially when looking at cities such as CDO in the Philippines. Apart from Isle of Asia, I also manage a website called Filipino Wealth that helps businesses start in the Philippines. And over the years, I've noticed a growing trend in search phrases and views about dating in CDO. After speaking to locals, they informed me that most people in general are slightly more conservative compared to cities such as Cebu or Manila. So, with all these growing trends, it seems that the Mindanao area is becoming a hotspot for dating in the Philippines. Pina Love is a common dating website in this area, and I've added the exclusive link in the description below for more information. Additionally, Facebook dating is also becoming more used in recent times. Let's check out the Philippines. Philippines? What's in the Philippines? Lapu Lapu City. Today, we will be looking at a few areas, including the cost of living in Lapu Lapu City, the transportation, and ultimately the difference between Cebu City and Lapu Lapu City. According to the latest data, the current population is just under 500,000 people. Lapu Lapu is a city on the island that is connected to Cebu. The island itself is where the main airport is located. In more modern times, Lapu Lapu City has been in the news several times due to the ongoing pandemic. The latest news from the time of recording is that there has been an uprise in COVID-19 cases and the Department of Health is investigating potential safety measures which could include placing the city on a level 3 alert. So now let's go on to a popular topic which is the money. Overall prices in the city are very similar to that of Cebu City, however there are several categories where prices are lower. Upon investigation you will find that there are plenty of apartments and condominiums at a great price. Of course, this is not to be said that there are no bargains to be had in Cebu City, but Lapu Lapu City often possesses high quality properties at more affordable prices. For a small studio in a condominium, prices range between 10 to 15,000 pesos. For a one bedroom condominium, prices range between 18 to 25,000, and we also found plenty of two bedroom houses between 9 to 16,000 pesos. In comparison, similar property types, including the same levels of facilities in Cebu City, were approximately 7 to 18% more expensive than those found in Lapu Lapu City. So now let's take a look at another significant category, which is transportation. Taxis can be costly if you're traveling a long distance distance or riding on the meter. However, the cost of public transport such as Jepneys or buses remain low. Tricycles are available as well as motorbike taxis aka Habble Habble. However, tricycles can be a lot more expensive than those prices of a motorbike taxi 
depending on the driver, so it's always best to negotiate. What I did find surprising was just the level of facilities on the island. For example, there are approximately 20 gyms on Mactan Island, and several of these have a price tag of less than a thousand pesos a month. So to summarize, in order to live comfortably in Lapu Lapu City, you will need a budget of between $1,300 to $1,650. However, if you can live cheaply, it is possible to live in Lapu Lapu City for less than $1,000 a month. Naturally, this will depend on your lifestyle and general living expenses. Our calculations estimated that Lapu Lapu City is approximately 17 to 23% cheaper for foreigners than Cebu City. This is based on a standard lifestyle and several lifestyle choices may impact your price percentage difference. So Lapu Lapu City versus Cebu City, what is the difference? There are several differences between both cities. Cebu has been rapidly developing for several years and it is home to many foreign visitors. Because of the developments, Cebu City has an easy lifestyle. However, in recent times, Lapu Lapu City has also been developing due to the lower cost of living. As a result, it is speculated that the city will grow in size with rumors of new resorts and hotels being built in the near future. All in all, one of the main significant differences is that the overall cost of living in Lapu Lapu City tends to be slightly more budget friendly for the standard resident. A question you may be wondering is, is Lapu Lapu City a good place to live? The city is a great place to live if you're looking for a cheaper environment outside of Cebu City. Furthermore, because it is slightly separated from Cebu, it has that somewhat community atmosphere that may be appreciated for foreigners who are looking to build connections with locals. In addition, due to its location, one benefit is that it does have access to a nearby beach. Therefore, if you like to be situated in a city and want to be near a beach, then Lapu Lapu City may be a fantastic option. Today, we're going to be diving into the world of living in Makati as a foreigner by exploring a beginner's guide including the costs, pros and cons, retirement and so on. The entire list of pros and cons including extra detail is available on the full article which can be found by clicking on the link in the description below. However, to summarize, the most significant advantages of living in Makati City as a foreigner include being in a modern city and experiencing a modern lifestyle, accessibility throughout the city, high levels of English, beautiful scenery, cleaner than other cities. The cons of living in Makati as an expat include can be expensive compared to other cities in the Philippines, can become very busy, traffic can be a problem, louder lifestyle for retirees. When living in Makati City, you will find that the city is very modern and upbeat. Therefore, the city offers a busier lifestyle that suits some individuals. Being a foreigner in Makati City is also more normalized than other areas. For example, if you are situated in a smaller city or province, then it is likely that you will be somewhat of a rarity. However, as many foreigners are living in Makati City, you may not turn head so much, <laughs> excuse my poor choice of words here, compared to other areas. The financial center is one of the city's hotspots and this is where many large corporations are based. Therefore, accommodation around this area is in high demand and prices reflect the need. In summary, Makati has an enjoyable lifestyle depending on the lifestyle needs. The cost of living and traffic may be a disadvantage for some expats. However, there are many pros to living in Makati city, which makes it one of the most enjoyable areas in in the Philippines for some expats. Typically, to live comfortably in the Philippines, you will need a budget of around $1,500. However, to live comfortably in Makati City as a foreigner, an overall budget of $2,000 is recommended. You may wish to increase your budget to $2,500 if you plan to live in a high demand area. There are several neighborhoods that offer a higher cost of living. Two well-known common areas include the Greenbelt Mall and the Financial center. However, it does sometimes pay to live in a more expensive area if you are looking to save time due to the traffic. 
there are some cheap studios to rent around the 20,000 peso range in Makati City. However, the majority of these in this price range tend to be without furniture and not in the best locations. So this is one consideration if you plan to live or work in Makati. On the other hand, if you are looking for a small furnished condominium in a prime area, prices will start around 35 to 40,000 pesos. The city's food costs are slightly more expensive than other cities in the Philippines, but only slightly. Most street food costs are almost identical to other parts of Manila. However, in my experience, certain Western chain restaurants are more expensive than other cities in the Philippines. Utility prices in Makati City cost anywhere between $100 to $200 a month. This includes electricity, high-speed internet, cell phone bills, etc. Makati is a fantastic city and offers retirees many opportunities for new beginnings and new experiences. Nevertheless, due to the city's developments, the busyness and higher cost of living may be a disadvantage for some retirees. It is possible to experience a similar lifestyle that Makati has to offer, but in a less expensive and less busier part of the Philippines. However, if you are looking for entertainment, investment or business opportunities during your retirement, you will love Makati City. In total, Manila is made up of 17 different parts, and if you are looking to live in Manila, you're probably wondering what is the best part and where to go. Well, yesterday I began to go through the 17 different areas, but the video ended up being far too long. So instead, we're gonna try this again, but focus on the most requested and popular areas of Manila. Makati is perhaps one of the most developed and beautiful areas of Manila. You will find that the street are clean and there are several things to do all across the city. You will also find many businesses and corporations that have been set up in this area. Unfortunately, due to the rapid developments and popularity, Makati is one of the most expensive parts of Manila. Quezon City can be a very popular part of Manila and statistically speaking, over 22% of residents of Manila live in this area. The advantages of living in this area is that there are some low cost lifestyles in the city. However, unfortunately Quezon City has a reputation for crime and it was once one of the most dangerous areas of the Philippines. The Las Pinas area is a fast-growing part of Manila and it is slightly quieter than other regions however it does have some fantastic sights and scenery. The area is known for many reasons but in recent years there has been many developments in Jepney factories in the area. Additionally the city does have some excellent accessibility routes, making it a great base if you're looking to travel to other parts of Manila. Calaorcan is located in the northern region of Manila. From the latest statistics, it is now the fourth largest city in the Philippines. However, even though this is located in the northern part of Manila, there is a south Calaorcan located on the border of metropolitan Manila and Quezon City. Pasay City is a famous spot for many travelers. The area is known for its career karaoke bars, shopping malls and art galleries. Pasay City also has some great entertainment and nightlife which is one of the reasons why it's become a hot spot with travellers over the years. Pasay is perhaps not the best spot if you are a backpacker or you're looking to save money but it's certainly not as expensive as other parts of Manila. Pasig is also another popular area of Manila and upon research I found the levels of crime to be slightly higher in this area area than other cities of Manila. Despite this, Pasig is a great area, especially for young professionals and entrepreneurs, and there are plenty of business opportunities within the city. So the question is, what is the best area of Manila to live in? Well, if money isn't a problem and you are interested in business, two of the best areas are Metropolitan Manila and Makati City. If you're looking to live in Manila, but you're also looking for a cheaper lifestyle, Pasig has some great opportunities options. However, if you are looking for a relaxed lifestyle, it's often recommended to live outside of Manila. This is because Manila is as beautiful and as crazy as you expect, but only certain kinds of people can live this lifestyle long term, and therefore, if you are looking for a relaxed way of life, living outside of Manila is the way to go. Everybody loves butthole. Everybody loves butthole. 
However, if you are planning to take a trip or move to Bahol, you need to know how much it will cost and your financial options. So let's take a look at the essential information that will help you decide if Bahol is right for you or not. The first category is accommodation. Tagbilaran is where many foreigners live in Bahol, so we will base the prices on this area. You will be able to find several small two-bedroom apartments in the price range of 6,000 pesos to 10,000 pesos. If you are looking to live very well, then there are some beautiful two and three bedroom houses available in the price range of 14,000 to 25,000 Filipino pesos. I found that a lot of the properties in this area were unfurnished. Based on my calculations, a furnished property came with a price increase of 12%. The next area of interest is food. And if you're looking to save money, Money, you will certainly enjoy living in Bahol. I found plenty of cheap eats and cost-effective food options across the island. Food services such as Food Panda is also available in Tagbilaran city. So after doing some cold calling to the local gyms I found that 100 to 300 pesos is all you need for a day pass to the local gym. For long-term membership prices hover around 1,500 pesos however there there are also budget-friendly gyms available. Transportation. Transportation is also an important area to consider if you are a foreigner living in Bahol. Ferry prices can fluctuate, but from Cebu to Bahol, you can expect to pay around 300 pesos for a one-way ticket. This is the most common and cheapest form of transportation between the islands. Flights from Cebu and Manila to Bahol are a few thousand pesos. Taxis start at 40 pesos, but Japanese are the cheapest form of getting around. I found that the biggest expense is entertainment such as going to the bars or going on a tour. Therefore if you have a relatively quiet lifestyle you will find Bahol cheap. Many bloggers live in this area and they've documented how they can live on an extremely low budget of $1,000 or less. However, I often recommend at least $1,500 if you're looking to live well as an expat in Bahol. However, in all fairness, you can live comfortably for much less. Today's guide will be a simple breakdown of the living costs in Dumaguete for foreigners and will cover everything you need to know about the costs and the fees. Dumaguete's cost of living can be broken down into five categories. Accommodation, utilities, food, transportation and medical care. There are also other categories including cost of activities, cost of clothing, etc. However, as these will vary from person to person, I will not give a full breakdown of these costs. However, I will take these into account when giving you the final total of the cost of living in Dumaguete as a foreigner. So let's take a look at the accommodation first. Dumaguete is a retiree hotspot, so you will find plenty of accommodation including some cheaper and more luxurious units. There are several one and even two bedroom units that are available for around 25,000 pesos but as we know the unit's location and quality will impact the price. You can also find some small studio units available for around 15,000 to 18,000 pesos. As always Facebook groups offer the best prices and negotiation is always key. And on a Airbnb you will be able to rent a three or four bedroom house or even a more luxurious condominium unit between the price ranges of 30 to 40 thousand pesos but if you are on a budget or you're looking for short-term travel you can find a nice small apartment for around 10 to 15 thousand pesos naturally staying longer can result in lower prices depending on the agreement so the next category is utilities over the last few days I've been researching this topic which includes phoning around for prices, finding interest in statistics and so on. In June of this year, Metro Dumaguete Water will increase its tariff from 25 pesos per cubic meter to 32 pesos per cubic meter. Over the years, electricity prices for many parts of the Philippines has increased. So with everything considered, you may wish to budget at least 50 to 100 dollars a month for utility prices, but naturally this will depend on your usage. Food is also a significant expense 
sense when looking at the cost of living in Dumaguete. You will find many markets around the city. For example, Dumaguete Public Market, which offers some fantastic food and low prices. The market is well organized and fairly clean, and apart from the food, you can also find cheap clothing and shoes. But the quality of these is not always the best. But anyways, the price of food depends on the person, but most spend around $200 to $300 a month. Transportation is not a problem around the city. Many use Japanese motorcycles and taxis. From the latest statistics, there are just over 2,500 registered tricycles in the city. Again, these expenses can fluctuate from person to person, but it is best to budget around $200 or so. If you plan to travel to other areas via the ferry or fly over to different cities, then additional funds will need to be considered. Medical costs are also an important category and there are several facilities around the area. I found that the overall expenses for general medical care and checkups were of good value compared to other cities of the Philippines. Still, specific medical complaints are quite costly to treat if you do not have the appropriate insurance. For example, a blood test checking for cancer can cost around 2,000 to 2,500 pesos, but a general blood test will only be a few hundred pesos at at the most. If you are interested in health insurance, take a look at this video. I'm thinking about recording another video on health insurance in the Philippines for foreigners, and this will go into answering some of the biggest questions that you have. So let me know if this is something you are interested in and what areas you wish me to investigate. So, what is the total cost of living in Dumaguete as a foreigner? In general, I found the prices to be slightly similar to Davao City. The expenses in Dumaguete are slightly lower compared to the larger cities, but it's possible to overspend if you do not have a budget. $1,300 to $1,700 is a recommended budget if you have a quiet lifestyle. Some expats have been known to live on much less than this in Dumaguete, but if you wish to live very comfortably, you may wish to budget slightly more. Baguio City is known as the City of Pines, but why are some expats choosing this city to be their home? Today, we will explore what life is like living in Baguio City, what you need to know, and ultimately, whether this is a good location to live, visit, or move as an expat. First, we need to know some fundamental information. Baguio City is located in the north of the Philippines and is 3 hours and 45 minute drive away from Manila and 2 hours and 40 minute drive away from Angeles City. Some parts of the area have been known as poverty areas historically. However, in recent times, the poverty rate has declined, according to the National Poverty Statistics. Nevertheless, the cost of living in Baguio City can be extremely cheap. The accommodation expenses will fluctuate depending on the quality of the unit. You can find nice apartments and small studios for under 10,000 pesos. The difference in price is often due to what part of the city you are living in, which is very similar to that of Cebu City. However, if you are not sure if you will be living in the city long term, you can always decide to rent an Airbnb or something similar. I found hundreds of available units in this area, quite literally, and many of these have dozens of four to five star reviews. Additionally, we have the food costs, and as we know, food is a significant category in the expenses of living in the Philippines. Regarding the food costs, there are dozens of cheap eats all across the city. But what about the lifestyle? If you are at the retirement age and you enjoy nature, a quieter city, but still want to be situated in the north of the Philippines, then Baguio City is perfect. You won't find as many expats in this area as you will compared to other cities, which some expats see as a very good thing. In addition, the locals are known to be very friendly and accommodating to expats who visit this area. I didn't find many foreign social groups in this area, likely due to the limited number of expats compared to the larger cities. If you decide to move to Baguio City, it's often recommended to get involved in the local groups. Safety is also a big concern 
concern when moving to a new city in the Philippines. So I've looked at the recent and historical data, crime ratings and personal testimonies to create a larger picture. Back in 2018, the city was known as one of the safest cities in Southeast Asia and during this time, certain crime rating categories dropped by just under 50%. From experience and the data, the city is safe in general, but as we know, no city in the Philippines or even in the world is 100% safe. Safety areas to consider in this region include traffic related accidents and scams. One surprising characteristic of Baguio City is that it's much, much, much colder in this area compared to other areas in the Philippines. Many expats enjoy this area because it feels like the heart of the Philippines, meaning that there are lots of traditions, cultures and experiences to witness, which makes it a very enjoyable place to live or visit when in the Philippines. Interestingly, as the city offers a slightly lower cost of living, business expenses can also be lower compared to other areas, especially when comparing to Manila. This is why many outsourcing call centers have opened up in this area over the years. Also, what I must mention is that if you're planning to move or visit Baguio City, you may wish to avoid the period around the Holy Week. Historically, the city has been known to almost double in size during this time as locals from all over the country fly to this area for Holy Week. Transportation is also highly accessible in the city and there are several options from other nearby cities, for example transportation between Manila and Baguio City. I found that there were many hospitals and smaller health centres across the city and many of these were privately operated. To conclude, the city is beautiful and it could easily be a great place to live for many years if you're looking for a relaxed lifestyle. 90% of expats will not need to spend more than $1,500 in the city. Even if you decide to not live in this area full time, it's a fantastic place to experience for a few weeks or even a few months. I have included everything that you need to know about living in Baguio City, but if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. In addition, you will find some extra information in this handy video where we discuss living in the Philippines. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Isle of Asia. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at Cebu and looking at if Cebu is a good place to live for foreigners. So today we're not gonna drill down in the specifics, but we're gonna go through a few different areas such as, is it a good place to live? We'll also cover some pros and cons to life in Cebu. Most importantly, the cost of living as a foreigner in Cebu, and also some extra information you need to know such as the traffic, the scams, driving, etc. So first, First of all, is Cebu a good place to live? Cebu is a very diverse island. In the south, it's very famous for its whale sharks and its tourism, but there are also some beautiful beaches in the north of the island. And Cebu City just makes up a very small part of the island itself. So if you're not looking for a fast paced way of life, then you may be better suited on the outskirts or on one of the other parts of the island. One thing you'll discover when living in the Philippines is that even though many things are similar, different islands islands and different cities have their own unique personality. Cebu has a great personality. It's very modern, very upbeat, and it has a great homely feel. Additionally, Cebu is a hotspot for investment in the Philippines, and more specifically, real estate. Real estate has been one of the biggest investments in Cebu over the last five years. So of course, as a foreigner, life in Cebu has its pros and cons, just like every other city in the world. So let's recap some potential pros and cons. So the potential pros are low cost of living, diverse island, beautiful beaches and wildlife, especially in the north and south of the island, unique city life, great nightlife and entertainment, friendly locals, and easily accessible to other islands. And some potential cons are, can be expensive in certain parts of the city, some parts of the city can be slightly dirty, slightly less safe compared to other cities such as Davao. There have been several reports of scams that have targeted foreigners in Cebu. So what about the overall cost of living in Cebu for foreigners? Well, funny enough, I'm the writer of a financial and investment website in the Philippines called Filipino Wealth. So I'll make sure that I will add a link in the description below so you can check out the full cost 
cost of living for life in Cebu. However, as a summary, if you're a foreigner living in Cebu, you can live very comfortably on an average monthly cost ranging between $800 to $1,500. So what do you really need to know about life in Cebu? The first thing to know is the traffic in the city. So a lot of people who work in Cebu tend to work on the standard office time, which tends to be eight or nine in the morning and finish around about five or six in the evening. And this can start to create a traffic problem. The government and transportation officials of Cebu are continuously looking at different methods and systems to implement to reduce the traffic in Cebu. The next thing to consider are scams. Now scams are very popular in the Philippines and if we're honest, scams are popular all across the world. However, there seems to be many different types of scams in the Philippines and specifically in Cebu. So scams are not always big and in your face. Sometimes they're very subtle and small. And an example of this is a common scam that happens in Cebu, especially in the bars and the clubs, and that is not to give the person the correct change. But aside from this, there are also many other types of scams, such as the romance scam, the real estate scam. We also have the cryptocurrency scam and also other types of Ponzi scams. If you guys are interested in more information about scams in the Philippines, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure that I do a video about this. The next thing to note is the development of Cebu. Cebu is a really beautiful city and overall it's a great place to live but coming in from other countries you may be slightly surprised about the developments in some parts of the city. So when we mention that some parts are dirty this doesn't necessarily mean any rubbish or any garbage even though that can be the case but sometimes it refers to unfinished construction work and also some abandoned areas. Today we're going to be covering a full guide exploring life as an expat living in Davao City. Today's video will be broken down into four distinct sections. First, we'll be looking at what is Davao like for foreigners. Secondly, the cost of living in Davao. Thirdly, the advantages of living in this area. And lastly, retiring in Davao as a foreigner. Davao is a more relaxed way of life compared to other cities in the Philippines. Nonetheless, some everyday hustle and bustle of city life, such as heavy traffic, does remain. Many expats living in Davao City report that the city's quietness is both a benefit and a disadvantage. For example, some cities can lead to being too quiet, and in some cases, this can lead to boredom. The food in Davao is fantastic, and Filipinos are amazing at cooking different types of foods and spices and herbs. In my own opinion, speaking to retirees, expats and those who are living in the Philippines, it seems that Davao City has become a slight hotspot for foreigners who are looking for love in the Philippines. For those of you who are interested in the history of Davao, it has to be said that the city has experienced a transformation stretching over several years. The current president of the Philippines was initially the mayor of Davao City. The city itself has won countless awards for safety and is well documented as a safe city to live in. Despite this, there has been some controversial topics regarding the transformation of Davao City. The majority of Davao City locals highly respect the current president. Still, the US Department of State received several reports of questioning certain vigilante groups, such as the DDS. The Ombudsman closed this case in 2009, however, stating they found no evidence that this alleged group existed. The island of Davao is extremely large, therefore the safety inside and outside of the city is slightly different. For example, there are tons of security and police that you will witness inside the city and not so much outside of the city. Thus, I recommend visiting your local embassy or travel authorities for the latest information and safety regarding the Philippines and Davao itself. The next category is the cost of living in Davao. The minimum cost you will need as a foreigner living in Davao City is $900. This is around 44,000 Filipino pesos, but a more realistic budget is around $1,400 to $1,600, which is 69,000 to 78,000 Filipino pesos. This latter amount will include enough to live comfortably in Davao as a foreigner, 
including some additional cash handy for extensions, emergencies and insurances. One of the highest costs living in Davao is rental accommodation. A standard studio can be rented for around 18,000 pesos, which is approximately $365, but a more luxurious unit, for example, a one bedroom apartment, can be rented between 23,000 to 30,000 Filipino pesos. The overall food cost is relatively low, especially if you're deciding to eat street food, but one cost consideration is the electricity and the Internet. The internet is relatively standard across the Philippines and a connection can cost around 1,500 peso on average. This is approximately $30. However, there are some cheaper and more expensive options available. Electricity, on the other hand, is a slightly interesting topic as the electricity prices are quite high in the Philippines, statistically speaking, compared to other electricity prices in other neighboring countries. So it's best to budget anywhere between $30 to $80 a month for your electricity, depending on your type of accommodation. Next, we have the advantages of living in Davos and as you can see there's quite a few different advantages. The ultimate question for any retirees out there is, is Davao a good place to retire? Many retirees living in Davao confirm that retirement in this area was a fantastic decision. This is because some retirees prefer the beautiful sceneries that you get from a city such as Davao, but also enjoy the beaches, which is possible thanks to nearby islands such as Samal Island. But retiring in Davao as a foreigner is not for everybody, especially if you are the sort of person who loves the modern hustle and bustle of a big city such as Manila, as you may find living in Davao to be too slow paced. But on the other hand, if you are looking for a much quieter way of life and to see some beautiful scenery, then Davao may be perfect for your retirement. Today, we are looking at Samao Island in Davao. And as you can see, there's quite a few questions to get through today, so let's begin. How to get to Samao Island? Samao Island is only two kilometers away from Davao City. The island itself is accessible via a local ferry, which operates from around 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on average. The duration takes approximately 10 to 20 minutes. And finally, the cost is as little as 10 pesos, but it is possible to take a vehicle such as a motorcycle or a car which is slightly more expensive. What is Samao Island like for foreigners? Some expats choose to stay on the island long term while others live on Davao City but often take regular trips to the island. This is very similar to locals as some locals who work in hotels stay on the island while others go back every night to their homes which is in the city of Davao. As it's an island, life is very different from the city. You won't find any malls or large supermarkets on the island, but instead there are some convenience stores and wet markets. What is there to do on Samal Island? Here is a list of things to do and places to visit while on the island. How can you travel around Samal Island? If you're staying in a resort, you may be able to arrange a pickup service from your accommodation. It is possible to take vehicles to Samal and you can also rent motorbikes on the island. Alternatively, there are also motorcycle taxis and buses. It's always recommended to haggle with the motorcycle taxis. Is it expensive on Samal Island? Pearl Farm is perhaps one of the most well-known resorts on the island and is famous for its luxury. But aside from this resort, many experiences are in fact cheap. However, some water sports can become expensive, especially if you are not a local. There are many unique spots such as Sabang Cliff that is entirely free and it is an excellent place to free dive and swim. What is the Samal Bridge development? The Philippines president who used to be the mayor of Davao announced some time ago now that the Philippines would be entering a golden age. And this golden age includes construction, which leads us onto 
the future of Davao and Samal Island. The bridge will cost just over 16 billion pesos, but will mean that transportation is much quicker and easier in the near future. The bridge is expected to be constructed by the year 2024 and open to the public by 2025. Is Samal Island safe from a tsunami? A tsunami can hit Samal Island due to its location. Many believe that Davao City would be safe from a tsunami as Samal Island would take the brunt of the tsunami. However, according to Davao researcher specialist Desidero Cabanlit, based on a simulation, the results may even be worse as water coming from behind Samal would pass through both sides of the island and form a bigger wave. In general, is Samal Island safe? Just like every island, there are always pros and cons. One of the great difficulties for most foreigners is being overcharged, so it's always vital to haggle in a polite and friendly manner. Looking through the statistics, there are very few reports from foreigners regarding crime taking place on the island. 